Whelan Presley and Van Ho Funeral Homes have been serving Quad City families and veterans for over 100 years. Whelan Presley is located in Rock Island, Milan, Reynolds, and Van Ho in East Moline, proudly supporting WQPT. Alternatives is a proud supporter of WQPT and has been serving our community for 40 years. Alternatives provides professional guidance to maintain independence and quality of life for older adults and adults with disabilities. A sign of the season, as well as patriotism, and what happens after Festival of Trees is over in the cities. On Saturday, December 16th, hundreds of thousands of wreaths will be placed on the graves of fallen servicemen and women. It's part of the Wreaths Across America program, which is also being held at the Rock Island National Cemetery on Arsenal Island. An estimated 2 million volunteers and supporters will take part in the ceremonies at about 4,000 locations nationwide. We talked about the local efforts with Rock Island National Cemetery Administrative Officer Daniel Baltusberger and Wreaths Across America local organizer Jeannie Cook. So Reads Across America, it, it, you've been really actively trying to get it uh, promoted for the Rock Island Arsenal and the Rock Island National Cemetery. Yes. What's happened this year? How successful have you been compared to last year? Well, um, this year we've um, actually, we have uh, about 10% of our grave sites will be covered with wreaths, um, which is 3,300 wreaths as of this morning. That's about 1,200 more than last year. Of course, we would always welcome more donations and we would, you know, throughout the year be able to um, sponsor more wreaths. It's a 12-month um, donation system. So at some point, the national organization will cut, up, cut off 2023 donations, which I'm assuming mm -hmm. is going to probably be about this coming weekend because the wreaths are going to be loaded onto a truck in Maine and make their way to the Rock Island Arsenal. So 3,300 wreaths is an awful lot. Yeah. I know it's only 10%, but that's still an awful lot of work. I mean, do you have volunteers? How does this all get accomplished? So on Saturday, December 16th, we do have volunteers. They can sign up online on the website, um, but a lot of people just come on that day. They've always come. Sometimes they come with groups. The, um, different um, legions, Boy Scout groups, just individuals that want to help that I've talked to a lot of people in the last couple of weeks. They're like, oh, I have classmates that, you know, my mom and dad are buried there. I'm in North Dakota, but my classmates are still in, you know, the Quad Cities. And we, they come and they take a picture of the wreath on my parents' gravesite right. and they send it to me. Rock Island uh, National Cemetery does do grave specific, not all locations do that. So if someone has a loved one that is buried at the cemetery, they can either sign up online or if they have difficulty doing that, which I know sometimes it, <laughs> internet is not always front, user friendly, they can call me, they can call the Arsenal, uh, the cemetery office, get my phone number or my email and they call me and I have a kind of a separate list. I think this year we have probably almost 200 grave specifics to lay, which um, for me, my parents are both buried at the Arsenal um, um, National Cemetery, so are my in-laws. And if someone has a loved one there that really would like a, a wreath on the grave site, um, it's important that we make sure that we get those laid. Um, after that, all of the other wreaths are um, laid uh, randomly in um, sections, and we take the time to speak their name, adjust the, the, uh, the wreath, um, set it on the grave, and um, give them a moment of reflection for their service to our country. Well, and Daniel, you were saying that, I mean, when you, when you look at the uh, National Cemetery of Rock Island, um, what, 30,000 uh, tombstones 
are out there. Um, and each is a person. It is important, perhaps, to, to remember all of these fallen men and women. Sure. I mean, we have uh, members from each conflict dating back to the Civil War. So it is important to take the time to um, speak their name to, you can look them up. Um, uh, there's a lot of legacy uh, websites, the VA sponsors one NCA, um, where you can learn about these sailors and soldiers and Marines and airmen because their sacrifice, however big or small, was still a sacrifice. You're the administrator of the, uh, administrator of the uh, uh, National Cemetery. When you think of the National Cemetery, you think of those big events such as Memorial Day, Veterans Day, um, and, but also this is one of those big events, isn't it? I mean, usually it's, it's all the flags that are being put out. I, I know you have the Boy Scouts out there and it's such a special moment to watch them doing this. How does this come uh, on par? I mean, it, it must be somewhat equal. Yeah, I mean, anytime people can get out and um, volunteer at the cemetery and take the time, it's, you know, it's a reverent thing. It, you know, to come out there, it is a national shrine and you're taking the time to honor those who have made our lives easier, to make our lives free when we weren't doing it. That kind of like that blanket of freedom. You know, everybody in this area is really um, responds well to veterans and that's why I've always loved this area. Tell me about December 16th, Jeannie, because I mean, that's the date that you're gonna be doing a lot of work. Um, is there a ceremony? I mean, what, what, how does this all unfold? So um, there is a ceremony. It will start at 11 a.m. on the National Cemetery. We are meeting um, at the main flagpole. Um, we will have um, uh, the other co-coordinator will be speaking. We'll have a speaker from the arsenal. We'll have um, honor guard. We have um, eight honor wreaths that will be placed and they will be placed by representatives of each of the branches of service. Um, and then after the ceremony is completed, we will um, lay the wreaths, um, the 3,300 plus wreaths. That's gotta be an all day event. Actually, uh, our volunteers are great. Oh, okay. Um, right. they, um, they pitch right in and um, they get it done. And as I was saying to Dan earlier, if we could only hope for 44 degrees, it would be <laughs> great because it's not always nice. It happens, rain or shine, cold or not. So uh, we, will, we will be there. I thought it was interesting that the theme is remember, honor, and teach. Let's underline the teach for a moment because this is one day, December 16th, but your organization is trying to actually get some more outreach throughout the year, is it not? Yes, so the national organization Reads Across America is very committed to teaching the younger children, younger uh, individuals, what veterans have sacrificed um, and um, what this, their, the freedom that they have means and uh, the price that it can come at. So they actually have on their website um, some lesson plans that teachers can download. Um, although um, Reads Across America is located in Maine, they have an educational truck that uh, travels throughout that area and um, you know stops and people can get on and view different things. I myself haven't seen it, but uh, they are trying to make sure that the younger generation knows what um, their freedoms have cost um, individuals. Well, Dan, I mean, the, the, the cemetery itself is, is so pristine. It, it's, it's, uh, it's just an amazing place to go, and I hate to say visit, but basically that's what people can do. Tell me what the next phase for the, the cemetery is. I mean, it's a, we're seeing veterans from World War II, you know, dying on a regular basis. I mean, they've gotten to that age. Tell me about the room, the capacity at the National Cemetery right now. Well, for those who have been on the arsenal uh, recently, you see that we are going through an expansion. Uh, that expansion is almost done. They've laid the sod, so it's not just a big dirt mound anymore. Um, but about 5,800 uh, grave sites is what we're going to receive. That should take us out about at least another 20, possibly 25 years um, before we 
could need another expansion, but that expansion pretty much takes us to our capacity of the land that the VA owns at this point on the arsenal. What happens then? <clears throat> well, uh, we either try to find more land on the island. We are, it being an island, uh, it's, <laughs> it's very limited. It, that, um, or uh, try to find uh, a spot in the local area. I mean, I, I can't speak for what they'll do, but I, I would hope that this area would always have a national cemetery that's active because it is important to take care of those who've taken care of us. Are there other national cemeteries, because I'm un unsure, uh, that are full, that have reached capacity? Sure. Um, we have one in our complex at Quincy, Illinois, is technically a closed cemetery, which basically Which is means... the only national cemetery in Iowa, my understanding. Quincy's in Illinois. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was thinking... Um, Keokuk. Keokuk, thank you. Keokuk, yes. Yes, you're right, Quincy, all right. And Keokuk is actually one of the original 14. Um, it, it actually predates Rock Island. Um, but yeah, our hope is that we always are able to honor our veterans right here in the Quad Cities. Jeannie, tell me, I mean, how did you get involved in this? And, and uh, just tell me that story of why this is so important to you. Um, well, um, my parents both died in 2016. My dad was in the Korean conflict. Um, he was in Korea when um, I was born many years ago. And he worked, uh, uh, he was the civilian executive for um, the Army throughout his career. Uh, when he passed away, I did not know about um, this cer ceremony in 2016. Somehow on Facebook, I saw it on tw in 2019. And so that was the first year I participated in Lane Reefs. And so um, in 2020, um, there was another gentleman that was in charge of the um, coordination of it. I reached out to him and we kind of talked. And then I believe he had some health problems and he relinquished his duties. And in um, 2021, there was a, a lady who actually was out of Chicago, Jamie Trent. Uh, she's a co-coordinator co with me. She has, uh, her husband is in the service and they have a fallen comrade that is buried at uh, Rock Island National Cemetery. So she was interested in getting involved. She now lives in Nashville, Tennessee. And so I'm the local person, but she and I help each other. And that's just kind of how it happened. This is something I, I just feel like it's really important to honor our veterans. Like I said, I lived on an army base for a number of years when I was a kid. My dad, you know, got to do right by my dad. So um, my husband's um, parents and are both buried there. And so it's just, it's just an important thing. Are you still looking for volunteers? I assume you're always looking for volunteers. Well, How do you I, do that? You know, volunteers for the day of, <laughs> like, I kind yeah. of let that just happen. It always seems like since 2019, when I've been involved, it seems like there's always volunteers. I really would love to get some corporate sponsorship um, or just more individuals. Reese Cross America does, um, you can donate. Um, Reese uh, sponsors are $17 a wreath, but they also have a program set up where if you have an organization, say a Boy Scout troop, and um, you want to make money for your troop for things they're going to do, every two wreaths that that organization would raise, Reese Cross America will give you $5 back to go towards your... Um, Nonprofit organization, right, yeah. Right, um, I have an organization that I set up, RIA Remembrance Wreaths. It's called a three for two program. So every two wreaths that someone donates, they will actually give us a third wreath free back to the island. And so that... That's a way to, to, you know, get more wreaths. Daniel, tell me, why is this event so special? Why is this so important uh, on the island? Uh, it's important because it honors our service members who went before us. It's important because uh, there are people who might have never met them, know them, know anything about them, and they take the time to come out and place that wreath. Um, like uh, Jeannie said, we're always looking for volunteers. Um, 
it takes about an hour, hour and a half with the ceremony. Uh, you'd be surprised how fast it happens in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> kind of speeds up the process a little bit. But we are always happy to have people out because that allows these people's stories to continue to live on because you know they, they see the names and they might look them up later. They might see that you know maybe they lived from the same hometown or maybe they went to the same high school or you know and there's a, a, a kinship to that and it keeps their story alive. Rock Island National Cemetery Administrative Officer Daniel Baltusberger and Reads Across America local organizer Jeannie Cook. 2023 has been a very good year for quantity musician Angela Meyer. This year she was named Midwest Country Music Organization Win New Artist of the Year. And she also opened for Pam Tillis and played the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville. Well, Angela also performed for us as part of our Chords and Coffee series. Here's Angela Meyer with Muddy Water. I said I'm drowning. I said then stand. I said I'm out of here. And I said when. Like a buckle on a bedpost. You're just hanging around. And ain't a damn prize left to be won in this town. For me, music is my literal entire life. Um, I grew up with a mom that was in a cover band, and so some of my earliest memories are at three years old, dancing around at the Iowa State Fair, and like the smoke and lights and secondhand smoke, all of it. Um, her parents were very big into country music. My grandma played steel guitar. My grandpa played um, guitar and saxophone. I think they both did their fair share of singing and probably writing as well. Um, and it's just definitely this thing that's been passed down in my veins. Um, my dad loves classic rock, so I got a little bit of that in me as well. Um, and I think every good country song kind of rocks and every good rock song has that country songwriting in it. Angela Meyer with Muddy Water. She's playing at Frick's Tap in Davenport and Ram's River House in Port Byron next weekend. This year's Festival of Trees at the Davenport River Center is now a memory, and the River Center is cleared of the trees, the wreaths, and all those other decorations, as well as the thousands of visitors who are now gone. But the impact of the festival has just begun. Festival of Trees helps fund the many outreach programs each year organized by Quad City Arts. And we talked with Quad City Arts Executive Director Kevin Maynard just before festival opened its doors this year to discover the impact the event has on the arts in our community. The Festival of Trees is the major fundraiser for uh, Quad City Arts. How critically important is this event to Quad City Arts? Oh, it's huge. I mean, it, it allows us to do, you know, a bulk of our programming. I mean, it isn't our entire budget, um, but it does allow us to have the impact that we do have. So thanks to things like Festival of Trees, I mean, we are able to 
put a visiting artist in front of you know almost thirty thousand students annually. Um, we're able to put murals into our into our community, um, uh, rotating sculptures, um, have two art galleries pay young adults to create art in our community and so much more. And I do want to get to all those things. Yes. <laughs> but I always ask you this, is that people don't really think of Christmas or Christmas trees or wreaths as artwork. But in so many different ways, it is. The creativity is there. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's sort of the cool thing about art. And I, mean, and I think just people in general will look at something and go, well, well, you know, this isn't like I'm not an artist because I did this. Um, but the reality is, is like, take a walk through the River Center and tell me that you can create some of these. I mean, that is art. I mean, I walk through and I am just amazed by the designs that people put together. I know full well that my Christmas tree at home looks nothing like any of those. I just don't have that skill and that talent. The other nice thing about Festival of Trees is that one little area, which is not that little, where you have the student artwork yes. uh, that is there. And, and, and just the creativity, and you can just see some of the, the budding passion in some of that work. Yeah, I mean, the, the high school art exhibit at Festival of Trees, I mean, is sort of like it's a cornerstone. I mean, it's uh, it's one of the ways that we're able to bring our mission inside of Festival of Trees and be able to show off what's happening in our community. Um, those young adults will be able to, like those high schoolers will eventually likely show at Quad City Arts. They'll likely do our Metro Arts program. Um, so it's really just creating the next generation of artists and being able to showcase that. The cool part about Festival of Trees and that, that exhibit is that, you know, we always have somebody that comes in to judge those and if you win best of show at Festival of Trees um, during the high school art exhibit at Quad City Arts you get the window display um, so you get to have your work all of your work on display right there in Rock Island. The, the, the youth artwork has been years has been there. Yes. Any success story? I mean because we see like that seventh grader that eighth grader you know where I'm going with yeah. this, that tenth grader. Yeah. Has anyone really blossomed into a big artist in the Quad City area? Yeah I mean you can see like well I mean one of the things that I always like to talk about is that we have actually one of our, our team members, uh, Alex Oliveria, um, who does all of our graphic design, does all of our marketing for Quad City Arts. I mean, she showed at Quad City Arts when she was in high school. Um, so we actually have a, a picture of her getting an award from Dawn, who she now works with. Um, so she's doing she's doing work professionally as an artist, as a graphic designer. So that's a really easy one for us to tie into. But there are a lot of stories where their students will have a piece of work displayed at Quad City Arts, either our high school art exhibit, um, at festival or in our gallery, and they'll go on to be in our Metro Arts program. They'll go on to you know study this in, in college and become professional artists. And when we talk about that outreach to kids, I always want to talk about the uh, Visiting Artists Series. 2024 marks the 50th year yes. of the Visiting Artists Series. You have had 600 artists, 427 <laughs> residences. Um, it, it's been a major part of the effort for outreach for Quad City Arts. Yes. The Visiting Artists Series is... I mean, it's one of our biggest programs um, because it reaches the most students. It reaches, you know, the most people in our community. It's probably the most visible as well. Um, it is so important because we are bringing in national and internationally recognized artists, not just to our community, but like putting them inside our public schools. So we are allowing students to see an art form that they may not have ever seen before, didn't even know and didn't have access to. Um, why that's important is because it teaches them about other art styles, but also teaches them about other cultures. And like studies will continue to show like that impact will carry on into their education. They'll do better in school, but they also, um, they're learning more about empathy as well. And they're learning how to read people's faces um, just by seeing that, that performance happen at their school. And a perfect example is one of your upcoming ones. It is uh, Larry Yazzie, who is from from the Meskwaki tribe yes. of, of, of Iowa. It's part of your Native Pride uh, series that's going on. I yes. mean, talk about the symbolism of that I, I, and the fact that you're trying to immerse people in another culture that's so easily forgotten, but it's right here yeah. in Iowa. Yeah, and so the, I mean, the one's really great about, about Larry coming in is that, you know, he is not only teaching people about like Native American dance, I um, mean, he's also teaching about the culture. Um, so we can see that culture reflected right here in our community and he can talk about, you know, the the people who, who lived on these lands first um, and be able to talk about that. And then also it culminates in a great performance on December 9th. Mm -hmm. so. so who does he meet with? I mean, it's, it's elementary school students. I mean, he gets yeah. out into the schools yeah. and that's all part of the program. Yeah, so the, the Visiting Artist Series, so it, it varies um, from artist to artist. Uh, we put out this call to all the schools, let them know what's coming in. And so depending on the time of the year will depend on, on where, where they're going. So um, uh, they, they'll, they'll visit anywhere from you know elementary school all the way up to college. 
primarily it's focused on that elementary to about middle school age. Uh, and they'll meet with the, the whole school. Sometimes they'll do a little workshop just, you know, with eight to 10 students um, to do sort of a deeper dive on things um, with things like dance. Uh, you know, they might they might teach them some of those uh, some of those dances. And well. I know I know you're always worried about the lack of funding for arts in the schools. And this kind of helps fill some of that void, does it not? Yes. And that is a part of the reason that some of this stuff has has evolved and been created over the years. I mean, it's so that, you know, we can help help create that access in the schools, um, which, you know, will take off some of the burden from, from the schools and not having to fund things like that as well. We got to look forward to 2024 and you have your call for entries deadlines coming yes. up by January 8th. Why is it important? Why is that date should be on people's calendar? Well, if you want to showcase at Quad City Arts, not just uh, at Quad City Arts in Rock Island, but also the airport exhibit. Uh, that is the time to, to get that in so it can be juried for the 24-25 season. Um, and with that, I mean, showcasing at, at both those galleries, you also are featured online. It's an opportunity for artists to um, not only showcase their work, but also to sell their work as well. And it is juried. T yes. Tell people, how's that process go? Yeah, so you will submit online. Um, we use a, a platform called Cafe or Call for Entry. Uh, that way they can, it's sort of a, a blind uh, submission so that nobody knows whose artwork that they're that they're looking at. And then they go through and they, they um, I say grade or rank, but they, they go through and they, they kind assess, of tally a sort of, yeah, assess the better yeah word. it's probably okay. a better word there. Um, and they'll assess on, on different categories, you know, so they'll look at the artistic style, they'll look at, um, you know, and then sort of how it'll fit in over the entirety, because obviously we want different genres and different mediums That's what I was throughout, thinking, exactly. the, throughout the exhibit. So they'll they'll sort of rank on those things to see, you know, who, who we want to bring in and who will pair well together as well. What are you excited about for 2024? Oh. I mean, well, yeah, I know. I mean, what's the programming look like? You know, Jim, this is like the hardest question for me all the time, because I always tell people, you know, it changes uh, with with the season. So like right now, like the coolest part of my job is that, you know, I get to do things like this. I get to talk talk about Festival of Trees, I get to go to Festival of Trees, I get to go to the premiere party. I, I love that. Um, you know, next week, the week after, it'll be, you know, be focusing on, on Native Pride and getting to see Larry's work. You know, 2024, you know, I'm always excited for our Metro Arts Youth Apprenticeship Series because, like, we're paying young adults to create art. Um, I'm also really excited about what we're doing in public art and placemaking. Uh, we will have in Rock Island, I believe three large murals that are going to be put in place in Rock Island through that program. And then there's also ones in plan for multiple other cities as well. Our thanks to Kevin Maynard, Executive Director of Quad City Arts. On the air, on the radio, on the web, on your mobile device and streaming on your computer, thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities. Presley and Van Ho Funeral Homes have been serving Quad City families and veterans for over 100 years. Whelan Presley is located in Rock Island, Milan, Reynolds, and Van Ho in East Moline, proudly supporting WQPT. Alternatives is a proud supporter of WQPT and has been serving our community for 40 years. Alternatives provides professional guidance to maintain independence and quality of life for older adults and adults with disabilities.